What's up, my good people in the YouTube world? It's your boy B, and I'm right back up at y'all with another video. And I want to make a whole facts video speaking about the Ahmad Arbery case. And I got my facts straight from the GBI. And this is what the GBI spoke about when they was on stand. Now, I wanted to do a video putting everything together. But in all actuality, that would have been a video way too long. And I don't expect everyone to watch something like that. So we're going to break it down piece by piece. And we're going to show why that citizen's arrest was unlawful. But first, we're going to look at exactly what happened during the chase of Ahmad Arbery. Because I hear a lot of people saying that he was the aggressor. But listen to what the GBI officer says about the whole chase. And remember... Anybody making this argument that somehow Ahmad Arbery attacked a guy with a shotgun, ask yourself why. But check this video out. Previous 911 call involving the residence that was under construction, correct? Yes. Uh, were either of the McMichaels the 911 caller for that initial call about the, the structure? Uh, no. Um, the, the, the person that called was Matt, Matt Albany. Neither Travis or Greg McMichael has called 911 at that point. And that's what I want to be clear on. So my follow-up question to you is, when the defendants, uh, the McMichaels, armed themselves with this revolver and shotgun, did they make a 911 call before going after Mr. Aubrey? No, sir, they did not. So there was no 911 call initially by them as they gave chase? That's correct. Can you describe the vehicle that the McMichaels were in? Yes, they were in a white Ford F-150 2019 model that belonged to Travis McMichael. Per statements of the defendants and video that you reviewed, can you articulate for the court whether there was any time in which the McMichaels were able to catch up to the deceased victim in this case? Yes, according to both their statements, and we have video of them, they caught up with Ahmad Aubrey as he was um, running. He actually runs down Satilla Drive. Satilla Drive takes a turn. But if you continue straight, it turns into Burford, which is the street where Mr. Bryan uh, resides. They catch up to him. Um, according to Travis and Greg McMichaels, they're giving commands to Maude Aubrey to stop. Um, this is captured. At, at, when this is going on, Mr. Bryan is outside of his residence, and he has a, video, a surveillance video camera that captures this shooting down his driveway. So you see um, Travis McMichaels truck and Ahmaud Aubrey at the, in his driveway, and according to um, Mr. Bryan's statement as well, um, he sees them uh, trying to uh, pursue in Ahmaud Aubrey. In the video, you actually see Ahmaud Aubrey trying to get away. He's running backwards, the truck moving backwards, and he's moving forward. He's trying to escape at that point in the video. Um, according to Mr. Bryan's statement, he then he does not he does not know Travis McMichael. He has met Greg McMichael, but he didn't recognize Greg McMichael at that time, because Greg McMichael was in the passenger seat of the truck. But he recognized the truck as a truck that's in the neighborhood. So then he yells, do you got him? Um, when you say he yells, do you got him, who are you referring to? Brian is yelling to the person in the truck who he doesn't know. Um, he doesn't get a response. Mr. Brian, his statement, then goes into his residence, gets the keys to his truck, comes out and cranks up his truck with the intention of, of assisting in the pursuit. So at that point, Roddy Bryan makes the decision to enter his residence, correct? Yes. Get his keys? Yes. And then what kind of vehicle does he get in to join the pursuit of Mr. Aubrey, the deceased victim? He is in a 2018 Chevy Silverado, gray in color. At this point in time, based on our best evidence, has any 911 call been placed by either the McMichaels or the Bryan? No, none have. Can you um, describe as best you're able, I know it's a convoluted situation, we're gonna to get to a map in a second, but to describe for the purpose of a record the best you're able, the sequence of events thereafter as these two pickup trucks at Satilla Shores are chasing Mr. Arbery. Yes, um, Mr. Arbery continued heading down Burford Road away from Satilla Drive. Um, Travis McMichael and Greg Michael are following him. Um, again, Mr. Uh, Bryan is then getting his keys and getting his vehicle cranked. Um, at one point, uh, Mr. Aubrey turns and goes back the way he was running in, a way, in an attempt to avoid the McMichaels. 
Greg McMichael, who had been riding in the passenger seat of Travis McMichael's truck, he's actually sitting on a child's car seat during this, at this point, he exits the vehicle with the intention of um, confronting Mr. Aubrey. Mr. Aubrey is running back down the road at this point. So according to Greg McMichael and Travis McMichael's statement, Greg McMichael comes back to Travis McMichael's truck and tells him, you know, go back, you know, um, back up, back up, you know, trying to encourage Travis McMichael to back the vehicle up and engage um, Mr. Aubrey. At this time, Mr. Bryan is, he is coming out of his driveway and his vehicle was actually backed in his driveway. So the front of his vehicle is facing the front of his driveway. So when he pulls out on the road, he sees Mr. Aubrey coming and he pulls his vehicle out in an attempt to block Mr. Aubrey in. That's according to his statement as well as um, Travis McMichael's statement. At that point, Travis Michael makes a decision. He tells Greg Michael, no, jump in. And his decision is to circle around Buford Road because it circles around and actually becomes another road, Zellwood. But it circles around, and his intention is to get and cut off um, Mr. Aubrey um, where Holmes Road cuts into Satilla Drive. And it's kind of, it's just, let's we'll make a loop and cut him off from that way, if that makes sense. So Greg Michael hops into the back bed of the truck. Um, because of the car seat situation, and they in, then go and start circling around the block pretty much to cut him off. At this time, like I said, Mr. Bryant has pulled his vehicle blocking the road trying to block Mr. Aubrey, and Mr. Aubrey goes around his bumper, his truck. According to Mr. Bryant's statement, he then pulls out on the road and makes several more attempts to try to block in Ahmad Aubrey, trying to detain him. I want to ask you a couple questions before we leave this point. Yes, At sir. this point, have the two trucks separated from each other? Yes, sir, they have. And um, you had mentioned Mr. Bryan's statement to you all. Did he talk about his attempts to sort of run uh, Mr. Arbery off the road or push him off the road using his vehicle? Yes, he, he made several statements about trying to block him in and using his vehicle to try to um, stop him. Um, his statement was that Mr. Um, Aubrey kept, trying, kept come, jumping out of the way and moving around the bumper and actually running down into the ditch in an attempt to avoid his truck. At um, various points during this chronology that you're articulating for the court and our record, um, based on the evidence you've seen, including some video footage, were you able to determine that using these two pickup trucks during the whole event, uh, Mr. Arbery's path of travel was essentially redirected by the actions of the defendants? Yes, sir, very much. Um, Mr. Bryan, so Mr. Aubrey gets, a, if I can explain. Sure. It's okay. Mr. Aubrey goes around Mr. Bryan's truck as he's pulling out. At this point, Mr. Aubrey is heading back the way he's come, which would lead him out of the Satilla Shores neighborhood. Mr. Bryan makes statements that he continues to try to block in Mr. Aubrey. Um, Mr. Aubrey takes a right turn onto Holmes Road, and Mr. Bryan is actually overshoots him going Satilla. So at this point, Mr. Aubrey is trying to avoid Mr. Bryan, and he turns down Holmes Road, which is actually going sideways back into the neighborhood instead of uh, out, which is the way he was traveling. Um, Mr. Bryan then uh, remaneuvers his vehicle and pursues Mr. Aubrey down Holmes Road. I want to be clear on that point. As you go down Holmes Road, ha had Mr. Aubrey been allowed to um, finish that path of travel, was there any uh, direction that could be made to get back to the exit of that neighborhood? Yes, if he went down to Holmes Road, he could have caught Zellwood and then gone back up again to Still Drive and going back out to Still Shore. So pretty much he could have gone straight, but he cut and would have had to circle back around. But he could have still escaped the neighborhood at that point. At some point in time, um, I know that a video was started by Mr. Bryan. Is that accurate? That is, yes, sir. And he's confirmed as much, and we have copies of that video from his cell phone, correct? That, that's correct, yes, sir. Uh, there's been portions of that video that were played um, widely on television, but it, there's actually other portions to that video as well, correct? That is correct. Can you please articulate for the court what you were able to see uh, and confirm with Mr. Bryan about what he did as Mr. Arbery was heading down Holmes Road away from uh, Mr. Bryan's vehicle? Yeah, so Mr. Bryan is pursuing Mr. Arbery down Holmes Road, <clears throat> again with the intention of trying to catch up to him and block him in. Um, at this point, while going down Holmes Road, Mr. Bryan turns on his cell phone camera and begins to try to videotape Mr. Aubrey. Um, Mr. Aubrey stops. Now, at this time, the McMichaels have turned off of Zellwood and are coming down from Holmes Road. So you've got one vehicle coming one way down Holmes Road and another vehicle coming another way, and Mr. Aubrey is in between. 
So at some point, Mr. Aubrey turns around and starts heading back towards Mr. Bryan. Um, based upon the statement, it, it appears that Mr. McMichael is coming. Mr. Aubrey's running, sees Mr. McMichael's truck, and then turns around and uh, runs back by Mr. Bryan's truck. Um, Mr. Bryan gets out of the way as uh, Aubrey runs past him, and then he sees the McMichaels come forward. Now, at this point in the video, Mr. Bryan has put the video down, so you don't have video um, of this sequence of events. But this is according to um, Mr. Bryan's statement that uh, Aubrey runs past his truck, then the Bryans come past his, I'm sorry, then the McMichaels come past his truck. Then Mr. Bryan pulls out and again goes back down in the direction of that uh, Mr. Aubrey had traveled. But before we leave this, this topic here, was any of this um, captured on the video before the, the phone was put down? Could, could you actually see Mr. Arbery trying to uh, evade the truck? Yes, sir, you can. Okay, and um, did you see him turn around and try to get away from the truck before it, it turned around? I'm, I'm referring, uh, obviously, to Mr. Bryan's truck. Yes, sir. And um, I know that you just said that the video was put down at some point and you couldn't see, but were you able to capture any audio? Yes, you can hear um, the different uh, Gears changing in the engine, moving in the vehicle. Yes. All right. And then um, along those lines as well, during the, the portions of the interview where Mr. Bryan was interviewed both by Glenn County Police Department and members of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, did he make any admissions to you that his vehicle had any contact with the deceased victim and any damage as a result there from? Yes. Um, he indicated at one point that his vehicle had contact with the victim. Um, his impression was that the Mr. Aubrey had been trying to open the driver's side door, but had did not got to the driver's side door. Um, he made that statement initially. The Glen County Police Department that day actually photographed the truck. You can see some palm prints appear to be swipes on the um, rear pass, uh, driver's side door. It's his truck is a four-door truck, right? So it's, there's some um, swipe marks and palm prints there. There is also white cotton fibers along the um, truck bed where the bed liner lips over the bed of the truck. There's a little bit of plastic in that bed liner. There is white cotton fibers along it, which um, Mr. Aubrey, during this pursuit and incident, was wearing a white cotton shirt. Um, the, there was also a dent directly below those white cotton fibers, and um, that dent was attributed to contact with Mr. Aubrey because of its location. In and did Mr. Bryan confirm during his interviews that the, that the dent was actually as a result of the vehicle making contact with him? I believe that that was his surmise. Okay. But I'm not 100% sure on that. Turning now to the situation we have involving the two pickup trucks. <coughs> After Mr. Bryan turned around, can you confirm that both pickup trucks were essentially facing the same direction on Holmes? Yes, they were. Both. Uh, it was, Tra it was Mr. Al Mr. Aubrey running back down Holmes towards the <coughs> drive, Travis McMichael driving his truck directly behind Mr. Aubrey, and then um, there was uh, Mr. Bryan behind Travis McMichael's truck. At some point, Travis McMichael's truck gets ahead of Mr. Aubrey. What happens when the McMichael's truck gets ahead of the victim? <sighs> this their vehicle gets ahead of Mr. Aubrey, then they stop their vehicle, and this is almost at the intersection of Satilla Drive and Holmes Road. They stop. Is this a public roadway? It is. Where is Mr. Bryan's vehicle located during this portion of the chase? Um, Mr. Bryan's vehicle is behind Mr. Aubrey. Mr. Aubrey at this point is between um, Travis McMichael's vehicle and Mr. Bryan's vehicle. Is Mr. Bryan able to video any portion of what happens next? He is. Have you reviewed that video and do you have it? I do, and I have. Can you please describe the chronology of events after the Michaels parked their vehicle in the middle of this public roadway as Mr. Arbery approached the back of that vehicle? Yes, I can. Mr. Bryan began, picks up the phone, it's been videotaping the whole time, and, and holds it up so you have a view. Um, you see Mr. Arbery running down Holmes Road, going towards Satilla Drive. You see Travis McMichael's truck is parked in the road. Travis McMichael, the driver's side door is open. Travis McMichael is there. Um, it is apparent to me he is holding a firearm. His arm is raised. It's in a pointed um, position um, at one point. 
then Travis, I'm sorry, then Mr. Aubrey is running. He then apparently sees what uh, Travis Michael in front of him. Then he changes direction to go around the passenger side of the vehicle. Rather than going to the driver's side where you had seen Travis McMichael with the shotgun, he's now going to the opposite side of that truck that's parked in this public roadway. That's correct. He's going around the truck. What happened after that? Travis McMichael then moved from the driver's side where he's actually standing. When you open the driver's side door, the door is at his back initially in the video, and he's got the shotgun. He then positions himself around the driver's side door towards the front of the truck. Um, you see um, Mr. Aubrey running alongside the passenger side. And again, you see uh, Travis McMichael has reposed himself on the front of the truck. Mr. Aubrey then comes up to a position, sees Travis McMichael, then makes a decision and turns and decides to engage Travis McMichael. What happens after that? Um, as he turns and goes towards Travis McMichael, you hear a shot. Then um, you see Travis McMichael moving backwards with uh, Mr. Aubrey. Um, obviously, they were engaged in a physical confrontation at this point. Um, they go off the screen. You then hear a second shot where you see blood and um, spray into the screen, a mist of it. <coughs> then they come back in to the um, view of the camera. They are, um, <coughs> Mr. Aubrey is striking Travis McMichael. There's a struggle going on. And then you see a, uh, then you see a third shot occur. Um, the firearm being lower down like that. You see the, after the third shot, you then see Mr. Aubrey get past Travis McMichael and continue running down Holmes, almost right there at the intersection, and then he falls. You uh, articulated three separate gunshots here, correct? Yes. Where was Greg McMichael at the time that this was going on? Greg McMichael was in the back of the pickup truck. Uh, when the situation began, he was on the phone. At this point, have they finally called 911? They have, yes. And um, was he armed at that time? He was. Um, as the confrontation began, he uh, drops the phone or puts the phone down and then pulls his weapon. And he has his weapon during the parts of the confrontation occurred. When you talk about his weapon, are you referring to the 357 revolver that you had articulated earlier during this hearing? So you just heard over 15 minutes of testimony by a GBI agent speaking about everything that Arbery did to try to avoid the McMichaels and also Roddy Bryant. Again, the video picks up on maybe the last minute of the whole altercation, but there were a whole four minutes prior to that. And during that whole four minutes, all Arbery was doing was trying to escape these guys. These guys were attempting to cut him off in his vehicle and they finally pulled up in front of him and got out of their vehicle brandishing firearms and pointing the firearms at him you can't claim self-defense if you are the initial aggressor period but thank y'all for watching this video my next video we're going to speak about the whole reasonable and probable grounds of suspicion we're going to tell you exactly what greg saw and what greg knew going into the citizen's arrest but this the live is again thank y'all for watching yeah